here we are getting ready to install the tubes. These are the four tubes that are cut to length. I use the industrial strength JB Weld. This is my driver that drives the tubes and of course my hand. And I'm going to go ahead and mix it up. But I also, not only do I put it on the tube, that's why I got this screwdriver. I go in here and put it on the inside of the head as well as that and then begin the push. So let's go ahead and get us a batch mixed up here and get it ready. Yeah, I just kind of get me a piece of cardboard and take the old black and white stuff and you want to mix this stuff till it turns a light gray. <coughs> like I mentioned earlier, don't let this scare some of you guys out there. Over the years, I've had people scared to death that all the epoxy will come out. But here's the problem with that theory. This is not holding pressure. All this is is a backup for the tubes because the tubes are press fit into the head. Okay, this is just acting like a secondary thing to keep a vacuum leak going between the cylinders. So there is no danger here. With combine this with a press pit, it'll never come off. You'll wear the piston rings cleanly out of the motor with 300,000 miles before this stuff would ever let go. All right, let's get a better shot now. Okay. And like I said, what I do first, I don't get a big blob on there, but I get a decent amount, and then I just run it down in the tube hole. Okay, then I kind of take the screwdriver, wiggle it around real good, make sure I got it painted. Then I'll go on the other side of the head and make sure I got a good little chunk in there. And you're going to have all kinds of excess that's going to squeeze out. That's fine. That's why you got to give this a day heads up because what happens is it's going to harden. And then you got to go in there and uh, blend it all out with a sand roll. You got to be kind of quick about it. I mean, you don't got to be super fast. But at the same time... You don't want to play around with it because it will dry fairly quick. The industrial strength takes about eight hours to cure. So we got time. I just don't, you know, like I said, I don't like to hee-haw around about it, I guess is a way of saying it. And then like I said, after that, I'll go ahead and put a little bit on the tube. I'll let you get a shot of that. Okay. And you, know, you can see I'll take it, kind of lightly go around it. And uh, oops, I almost forgot one important thing where I have a mess on my hands. Sorry folks, got ahead of myself there. Always take and put these gloves on and you'll be digging this stuff out to Hades, I tell you. Okay. Okay, now we got that. And I just go ahead and I just kind of go all the way around it. I just It's just my way of making sure that no part of metal is uncovered and I just slide it. This has got a beveled end and a flat end. Make sure the beveled, the radius end is going in first. Go ahead and get this one here ready too. Okay. All right, ready. Then once you start to get them shoved in there, I usually take this. and press them all the way down. And then I'll try to wipe my excess up because I'm going to need that in just a minute and I'm going to show you why. Now here's the important part here. You want to make sure 
that you got this not just level but that it goes down just a touch below the line so that you don't have a head bolt problem then you gotta pull her up and go in here and you paint a big dab of that epoxy all in where that tube is in the port okay this just is a double security measure right here this just makes triple quadruple sure that if there is any vacuum leaks if there's any monkey business going on that uh, it catches it so hard to do this on your own y'all I tell you you always take and uh, put just a tap and go in there and make sure you got plenty on the, the area where the uh, tube is so it goes in any crevices and corners and then man you are home free. Bad thing is boy this stuff makes a mess. <laughs> So you try to get as little of it on everything. Make sure you take your screwdriver and get this out of here. You're going to have all kinds of residue on the inside. That's just where I precautionary take and um, put extra so I can see it squish out. Okay. Um. Alright. So, what you just seen me do, besides make a mess, you just seen me put it in there, fill in the area of the tube. Of course, I've done it on both sides. I literally pack it in there. And now she's going to, have to sit and wait. I got to do the other head, but I think you get the point here. Um, putting that epoxy in, doing all that makes a big difference. It, it, there's just no way it'll ever have a vacuum leak when you look at the fact it's got a press fit. Okay, after the epoxy drying, you can see the mess that it leaves. I basically go in here and just kind of hit it, try to knock the heavy stuff off of it with a straight edge. Uh, it is at this point that I will probably go on in there because it'll leave a little blemishes. Not that you can even feel them with your fingers, but um, people complain about everything and they want something pretty, so no big deal. I, I understand that myself, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead. I'll scrape the epoxy off. Let me show you what it done on the inside of the ports, what it looks like. As you can see, it's epoxied up pretty good. I really splash it on. It's no problem going in there with a sand roll. I'm just wanting to make just deadly sure that in the crevices, that's why I took my finger and pushed to get any in there. I got to clean that out. Let's take a look at the other side. Okay, same way over here, all packed in and push. There'll be little pieces I got to get out that I'll use my uh, scribe little pieces. I got to go through it. But mainly knowing it's packed and everything's good, but also I got to go up in here and uh, clean the passage out for the head bolt. But anyway, just got the heads back uh, yesterday. After I cleaned most of the epoxy out, I went ahead and surfaced them. One head was out six thousandths, the other head was out about two and a half. But I haven't ever taken a set of aluminum heads off that didn't have a little bend to it. But if they're any more than about two thousandths, I like to have them surface to get them straight. So I got around the edges where the surfacing uh, laid edges on the chambers. And uh, finish removing what epoxy's left and then carry them to the car wash and clean them up. All right, we're on our way out. Oh, yeah, we CC it so y'all can see what we got when we're done. Okay, real quick, I was wanting to show you. After I ground the seat and blended it where you can't feel the texture difference from the iron seat to the aluminum, there is one more step. While I'm here, I figured I'd show you. And what we're talking about here is it left a little bit of an edge right where you can still see the line. I think I can get it to you. You should be able to still see the line. 
okay? Then the bluing, then the C, okay? It's a sharp edge there, and basically what I do is I take my sand roll, and I go ahead, because I'm in the polishing stage, I've already stained it. I go in there and hit the area that was stoned. Notice how quick it pulls it in, by the way. Now, I come here and get on the iron seat, and I'm barely knocking that edge off right there. Just a touch. And like I said, the reason that's done is it leaves a little bit of a sharp edge right there where I ground into the hardened seat and I just lay that back and it just breaks that little bit of a rough edge so that it goes aluminum seat port and then boom it lays right into the 60 degree angle then the 45 it's just a, a rough edge knock deal I go back in here and that's what I'm doing now 